Hello, welcome back. And this exercise now we're going to look at the exponential probability distribution. This one is very similar to the Poisson distribution. The Poisson, you remember, was a, distribu a discrete distribution uh, where we looked at how many events occurred over a specified interval, uh, time or space or something like that. The exponential probability function now is the continuous version uh, of that similar kind of thing. So instead of, uh, I don't know, a, a Poisson variable might be something like the the number of cars, so let's say 10 cars per hour, that would be discrete, uh, whereas for the exponential probability distribution, we're really just looking at the inverse of that. It would be uh, 0.1 hours between cars. A tenth of an hour between car, 10 cars per hour. So we're really just looking at the, the continuous portion, which is the time, is the continuous variable, as opposed to the cars, which are the discrete variable. So in any case, let's forget about that for now. We'll come back to that in a later problem. But these two, are, these two uh, distributions are very closely related. That's my point as I babble on. Okay, so here, here's, uh, here's our distribution. Here's our density function. It looks something like this. We have a mean of 9, so let's say that mean is somewhere around here. Just like the Poisson distribution, the mean and the variance, or sorry, the mean and the standard deviation uh, are the same. So if I have a mean of 9, I have a standard deviation of 9. And let's see, we want to know what is the formula for specific probability. So we're looking for the cumulative um, probability function. So what that is, it's the, the, the formula to calculate the area under a curve, because like the other continuous distributions that we've looked at, those probabilities are obtained by calculating the area within an interval, or the area under the curve within an interval. So here, the generic version uh, x minus x, oops, x minus x naught would be 1 minus e to the negative x naught divided by mu. So that's our generic function for calculating these probabilities, but we know what mu is, so we can substitute that in. So I'm going to do that just over here. I'm going to change this question mark to an equal sign. This is 1 minus e to the negative x naught divided by mu, which I know is 9. All right, so there's our, our formula now for calculating those areas, which are, of course, the probabilities of interest. So now we're going to use that for the rest of this problem, b, c, d, and e. We're going to do this a few times. So let's start uh, probability that x is less than or equal to 7. So all I need to do is plug that into the formula that we just derived. 1 minus e to the negative 7 over 9. So here, if this is where my 7 is, let's say 7 is somewhere here, this formula will give me the area under the curve out here. So let's get the calculator out. This calculator has a funny order of calculation, so the way I'm going to enter it might seem a little funny, but this calculator works in a funny way. So this is going to be 1 minus, I'm going to open brackets and put the fraction in negative 7 over 9. Uh, but now I'm going to put that to base e, and so now you can see it's put e to the power of uh, that ratio, 7 to 9, and equals, there's my answer, 0 0.54. Oops, 0 0.54. 0 0.54, so this area here is 0 0.54. All right, so we have a 54% chance of drawing a value uh, from this distribution that is less than or equal to 7. Uh, moving on, same calculation, but now with our value of interest is 4. So instead of 7, let's get rid of all this. Now I'm going to be looking at 4, so a little bit further in. And now we want to calculate this area. So the calculation is the same. I'm just going to change our numbers. This is 4. This is negative 4 over 9. And again, just enter these values in 1 minus open brackets 4 over 9. Oops, that'll give me a horribly wrong answer. 1 minus 
negative 4 divided by 9 base e enter 35 let's call that point 36 0 0.36 okay there we go moving on compute the probability that x is greater than 11 okay so now we're going to come out to this side of the distribution at 11 and we want to know this area here well again the area under the curve is equal to 1 so what we're going to do is we'll calculate using our using our function here that we've just been working with I'm going to plug in oops we'll do the same calculation but with 11 negative 11 over 9 so that gives me this region here and of course if I want the the upper end of that distribution so x is greater than 11 I need to calculate 1 minus all of this which is then going to be let me see if I can squeeze this in <clears throat> So this will then be 1 minus this value. So let's go ahead. This is going to be 1 minus 1 minus e to the negative 11 over 9. And so I'll have, where's my calculator here? 1 minus, I get those brackets, 11 negative over 9 base e equals so that's going to be let's do this in steps 0 0.705 0 0.705 and now we can do the rest 1 minus 0 0.705 0 0.295 0 0.295 so that means that this pink area here that was the area 0 0.075 1 minus that gave us the green out here 0.295. Okay, good. Now let's look at uh, E. Compute the probability that X is between 7 and 11. Well, we can use the information that I think we already have because I have this pink area here is 0 0.705. Here we've calculated the value for 7, and I know that this region here, we already calculated that was 0 0.54. So if I want what's left, if I want that pink space that's left over in here, that's going to be the probability uh, that we calculated for x less than 7, which is here, minus x less than 7 over here. Did I say that right? Here's x less than 11. Here's x less than 7. So the probability that, seven, that x is between 7 and 11 is equal to the probability that it's that x is less than or equal to 11 minus the probability that it is less than or equal to 7. So here we've calculated this right up here was 0 0.705. Here we calculated this part was for part B 0 0.54. And so this is equal to 0 0.705 minus 0 0.54, 0 0.165. And there we go, 0.1605, and that's all there is to it. So it's a good exercise, good practice. A lot of the time, the difficulty is calculating, you know, between two values or calculating values in the upper tail. Those are usually the tricky ones, and they're the ones that are worth getting as much practice with as you can, because the formula is designed always to only give us the lower the left hand side of the distribution so it's helpful to work with that uh, and and uh, you knowing that the area under the curve is equal to one and you can really calculate any probability that you want from these continuous distributions okay i hope that was helpful thank you for watching bye bye